My name is Adam Driscoll from Iron Man Software, and today we'll be talking about building a custom PowerShell host. PowerShell Conf EU 2020 is brought to you by these sponsors. Uh, our agenda today is going to be first about uh, talking about what um, hosting PowerShell provides. Then we're going to talk about PowerShell versus Window PowerShell hosting and what it means. And then we're going to look at a demo. The most of this talk will be a demo. First, let's talk a little bit about what it means to host PowerShell. So PowerShell itself, you may be familiar, is running commands in uh, the console, the ISC, or VS Code. Those are different PowerShell hosts. Uh, the VS Code PowerShell host, for example, is a PowerShell module that runs inside an external PowerShell process and communicates back and forth to VS Code to give you the editing experience. The PowerShell terminal itself is a PowerShell host that runs the commands directly in the host itself and provides input and output um, in the console experience. But there's other ways to host PowerShell. The most basic way to host PowerShell is the ability to execute PowerShell scripts and commands directly from .NET assemblies. So you could have a .NET uh, executable or DLL and just run some PowerShell commands uh, directly inside that uh, process and then that would be considered hosting PowerShell. You can take it a, a next a step further and uh, host PowerShell um, in one of those types of assemblies or executables and then handle the input and output. So you can uh, input arguments from a command line parameters or maybe uh, arguments from methods being called inside of your .NET assembly. And then you can handle output like writing the different streams in different ways. So you could write uh, the error stream as a message box or um, the information stream into a rich text box in a Windows form, something like that. And finally, to take it to the, like, the most customized level is to actually build a custom user interface around the PowerShell hosting experience. This allows you to uh, build tools that use the PowerShell host um, to represent the different interactions you may take with uh, PowerShell uh, in a different way. So, for example, if you use write progress inside the ISE versus inside the console, those behave differently. So you kind of have the, uh, the ability to override how write progress is used um, if you build a custom PowerShell user interface for your PowerShell host. So we're gonna go and look at how to do that in this demo, and we're gonna build a custom user interface uh, around the PowerShell host APIs. So there is a difference between hosting in po Windows PowerShell versus uh, PowerShell itself. So first of all, Windows PowerShell is built on the .NET framework. It's PowerShell that is installed with Windows and it runs on the .NET framework. Um, the most recent version is PowerShell uh, version 5.1 and I think by default it runs on uh, .NET Core 4.6.2 or something like that. Uh, PowerShell Core, or well, PowerShell now is running on .NET Core. Um, the as of this recording, the most recent version is 7.0.1, and that uh, is cross-platform and it uses uh, slightly different, um, or not slightly different, different technology than .NET uh, framework uses. So there are some differences in the way that the hosting works. Uh, usually though, you don't have to uh, write your code too differently, uh, depending on uh, what you're hosting in. I think as time goes on, these two things will um, separate a little and then uh, it'll be, there'll be more features in PowerShell than there are in Windows PowerShell. Uh, if you're hosting in Windows PowerShell, you need to use the NuGet library, PowerShell Standard Library. And what that does is it brings in a bunch of reference assemblies, which means that uh, it doesn't actually contain the PowerShell SDK, but it references all, all the same types that you would expect in PowerShell, which I'll kind of talk about those types in a little bit. And then it expects that Windows PowerShell is installed on the machine that you're running uh, your custom PowerShell host on. So then it'll go find that custom, or the PowerShell SDK that is installed on the machine. So it's going to run with the most uh, the installed version of Windows PS. So you can't actually enforce that necessarily uh, in your PowerShell host um, or include the host or the version in your PowerShell host. Uh, so you have to kind of rely with what is on the system. 
That said, it makes uh, the assemblies much smaller because you're not including the entire PowerShell SDK. Uh, it also means that the modules are all available on the box because those are installed with Windows. When you're hosting in PowerShell, you have to include the Microsoft PowerShell SDK NuGet library. That's the actual PowerShell runtime itself. So that makes it more portable. So it is also portable and self-contained. So that means you are pinning your PowerShell host to a particular SDK version. And then it's going to use that SDK version that you built against uh, inside your PowerShell host. That said, if PowerShell itself is not installed, you may not have a lot of the built-in modules that are available um, when you install PowerShell uh, from like the MSI package or something like that. So uh, you got to keep that in mind when you're hosting um, using the Microsoft PowerShell SDK. So today we're going to be looking at building a PowerShell host on .NET Core using the Microsoft PowerShell SDK. So with that, uh, we're going to jump right into a demo and we're going to build uh, several different variations of a PowerShell host. So in this demo, I'm going to show how to use the .NET Core SDK to build a custom PowerShell host using .NET Core and the PowerShell SDK. So I have VS Code open here. Um, I have the C Sharp extension installed and the .NET Core 3.1 SDK installed. So the first thing that we need to do is create a new uh, project inside this folder. So I just have an empty folder called GUI PS. Now if I open a new terminal, which you can do Control Shift tilde or uh, or backtick or just do that new terminal command that I just did. And then from there we can use the .NET command to actually go ahead and create a new project. So you say .NET new. Uh, we're going to want to say the type of project, so we're going to create a console app and just hit enter. So this is going to scaffold out the uh, C-sharp project for us. You can see it created a C-sharp proj file here and then in pretty much empty uh, program.cs. Uh, from there we're going to actually set up some uh, debugging or debugging JSON, launch.json file. So I'm going to select .NET Core and it's going to scaffold out a default um, launch.json for me. So now I should be able to hit F5 and it will build and then run my .NET Core app. You can see here if we go to um, the debug console, hello world was printed out in my console app. So that was from this console.write line. So in order to get the PowerShell SDK in here, what we need to do is we need to uh, add the Microsoft dot powershell dot sdk package so you can use the dot net command to do that again so you say dot net add package and then all you gotta do is just type microsoft dot powershell dot sdk so that will install the latest version you can also uh, pin it to a particular version by specifying the version um, on that command as well but we're just going to use the latest and what that did is it actually updated the CS proj to have a package reference for the Microsoft PowerShell SDK. So, like I said earlier, the easiest thing to do to actually execute PowerShell is to run commands or scripts inside your uh, .NET application. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new PowerShell instance. So um, there's going to be a lot of C# -sharp in here, obviously, because uh, we're building a C# -sharp app for PowerShell. So I'll try to describe it the best I can, but I'm always open uh, for questions either on the uh, PSConfU stream or on Twitter, uh, whatever you want to do. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new PowerShell instance, and we do that using the PowerShell class. So the PowerShell class is part of the PowerShell SDK. So I hit control period there to uh, add a new using statement to system.management.automation. Uh, that's the same namespace that's been around since uh, the PowerShell early days. So uh, that's why this code will work in both Windows PowerShell as well as PowerShell Core. So now we're going to do PowerShell.create. And the reason I put it in a using block is that uh, PowerShell, this PowerShell object is disposable, which means that it has resources that you need to uh, clean up after you're done executing this PowerShell uh, command. So that's why you put it in a using statement. It enforces that that PowerShell command is then cleaned up. So once you have access to PowerShell, now what we can do is we can do some stuff to uh, 
add commands or parameters or scripts to this PowerShell instance. So let's just add a little script. I'm just going to call uh, something like, let's see, we'll do start process. And then we'll start up a notepad process. And that will actually uh, parse that script and then execute that script using PowerShell. And then all we have to do is call invoke. And from there, it will actually invoke that PowerShell script and start Notepad. So save that file. We'll press F5 again to start this process up. And it is going to compile, execute, and run that PowerShell script. So once that loads, you'll see that Notepad opened, and I am now hosting PowerShell in my .NET Core app. So you can put any valid PowerShell script inside here. Um, there are other ways to execute commands. So like I showed before, if you want to be a little more specific and you don't want just arbitrary PowerShell script, you can do things like add command. Um, from there, you would just put the, the start process um, command in here. And then it's a fluent API, which means that you can chain other calls onto the end of this. And then from here, you would add your parameter. And then this is where you would add the parameters for uh, the file path that you're trying to execute, as well as any arguments that you might want to add to this start process command. So this is the easiest way that you can actually host and run PowerShell inside your .NET applications. So I want to talk a little bit about um, kind of taking this a step further and kind of configuring the environment that you're running in. So running PowerShell commands like this, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. You can just kind of dump your PowerShell scripts in here and execute them in PowerShell. But there are a lot of environmental things that happen with PowerShell. Uh, modules that may need to be loaded, um, restrictions you may want to put on the PowerShell that's actually allowed to be invoked, um, assemblies that should be loaded, that kind of thing. Um, and typically this is done through uh, run space configuration. When you uh, use this type of syntax here, all you're doing is using the default run space. PowerShell's creating its own run space for you. Uh, it's populating it with some default settings. But what you can actually do is create your own run space. So a run space is a PowerShell concept. Uh, typically you see these used for things like threading in PowerShell. You can create background run spaces. Uh, for each parallel, for example, creates a bunch of run spaces to run background jobs, that kind of thing. So a run space you can think of as a PowerShell execution environment. So although this PowerShell script executes here, uh, the run space persists after this thing is cleaned up. So you could continue to execute things inside that run space and it would maintain state like variables, imported modules, and that kind of thing. So let's actually go ahead and create our own run space. So what we do to create a run space is we use a run space factory. So we're just going to do run space factory. And if you hit control period again, it'll auto suggest that we want to use a system.management.automation.runspaces namespace. So inside that namespace, uh, we have run space factory. And we could easily just create a run space with create run space. So if I want to execute PowerShell inside that particular run space, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say PowerShell.runspace and set the run space for this particular PowerShell execution. So RS, we have to make sure we open the run space before trying to execute anything in that run space. So now you can see that I have my own custom run space, I've opened it, and I want to execute some PowerShell in it. But we're going to change this a little bit. We're going to actually make it um, set a variable and then we're going to actually receive that variable uh, later. So let's add a script. Um, we're going to call, let's just do it this way, test equals one, two, three. And we're going to invoke that script. And then from here, we're going to create another PowerShell instance, uh, continue to use that run space. And then we are going to just dump that variable. And we're going to store that inside a C sharp variable. And I'm going to set a breakpoint here so we can look at this in the debugger. So I'm going to press F5. It's going to run. It's going to execute that first PowerShell script and that second PowerShell script. And invoke returns a collection of PS objects. 
So if we actually look at this particular PS object, you can see that it's a collection, there's a count of one, and that first PS object is one, two, three. So this is an example of getting the actual PowerShell objects out of PowerShell and into C Sharp. So you, as you can see here, I ran this PowerShell script, it set this variable, and then I return that variable from PowerShell back to C Sharp. Um, and it persisted in that run space. So I created two PowerShell instances, invoked each one of those, and then all that state was stored in the run space. So that is how you can kind of persist your state in your application using a run space. So you can use as many run spaces as you know you can you know, dream up, that kind of thing. Um, and there's all different types of run spaces. So there's uh, in-process run spaces, out-of-process run spaces, remote run spaces, that kind of thing. So depending on your scenario, you can kind of create a run space that dictates um, what you're doing there. All right, so that's kind of how uh, you persist state with a run space. All right, now that we went through the basics of kind of running PowerShell in a custom .NET host and dealing with run spaces, we're gonna look at how to build a custom user interface around uh, the PowerShell execution engine. So this will allow us to hook into things like write process or read host um, and that kind of thing. So I am gonna use a project called uh, GUI CS to do this. So this will give us a little visual indicator of what it kind of looks like to build a custom interface around the top of PowerShell. So GUI CS is a .NET um, library that we can use and what it does is it creates these cool little uh, console based GUIs. So there's actually a PowerShell team project that uses the terminal GUI framework to build some UIs um, and it's cross platform which is really cool and just kind of runs in the terminal. So there's all kinds of cool buttons and menus and message boxes and progress bars that you can actually create um, using GUI CS. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the GUI CS uh, project installed. So we're just going to do .NET add if I could type a package, and then we're going to do terminal .cs. Oh, dot .GUI. If I could get that right, and then we're going to hit enter. And what it's go that's going to do is it's actually going to add that package to our CS project again. As you can see, I have terminal.gui now added as a package reference. Next, we want to start adding some code to create our application. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to initialize the application and create a new window. So to do that, uh, what I need to do is call application.init. Uh, first, I'm going to bring in the terminal.gui namespace. So that's added that to the top up here. Um, and now we initialize the application, we grab the top window, top level window, and then we've, we're adding a new window to that top. This window is going to have a menu at the top, and then we are going to fill the rest of the screen with the window. So there's some cool like tools, uh, utility classes and stuff like that that allow you to uh, manipulate the size of your controls and that kind of thing. Uh, next, let's add a menu to the top so that we can actually um, get in and out of our application easily. So I'm going to actually add a menu that has a, uh, a file menu at the top there, and then underneath file we're going to have quit. So let's just line that up a little. And when you run the quit command, what it's actually going to do is run this lambda function here, which is similar to a script block. Uh, like an anonymous function, and then it's going to set the top level window running to false, which effectively terminates the application. So finally, what we need to do is we need to uh, run our application. So after we've added all these controls to the top level window, I am going to call application run, and in our terminal down here, what we're going to do is call .NET run. And the reason I'm not running this through the VS Code debugger is because the VS Code debugger actually redirects console output to the debug console inside VS Code. And that actually causes GUI CS to crash. So instead, what I, got, I have to do is call .NET run and hit enter. And down in the bottom here, I don't know why this is happening. 
you can see that I now have my GUI application. So uh, I can resize it. We have this cool little window here. It says GUI PS, which is the window title that I set. You can see that I have the file um, menu item. And if you press F9 in here, it'll open that file menu item. And I can press uh, quit or enter on uh, the quit command. And now it's terminated the application, and we're back in our terminal. So that is the example of a simple GUI CS application. So what I want to do uh, for the rest of this demo is kind of go through how to wrap uh, this around a custom PowerShell host. So there are some gotchas when using GUI CS. It uh, behaves similar to other UI frameworks. So if you've used um, Windows Forms applications with PowerShell, technically you're creating a PowerShell host if you're using that. Um, but with GUI CS, the, um, the, the system itself has a main loop, which needs to run on the main thread that does all the drawing. So if you're running PowerShell commands that block that main loop, you'll see the UI freeze, just like you will with um, a Windows Forms app if you do certain things. Like if you have a run long, run, run, long running process in a button, um, if you don't put it in the background run space or something like that, what it's going to do is it's going to lock up that UI and you won't be able to do anything with that UI. GUI CS uh, works the, or yeah, GUI CS works the same way. So um, we're going to do some things that might not make a total, a lot of sense if you're not a C-sharp programmer, um, but this entire application will be available up on GitHub. So you can pull it down and tweak it and add some stuff to it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to add is a, um, a static run space that we're going to use kind of throughout the application. So like we looked at before, uh, we want to have this run space maintain state for us. We don't want to create a run space every time we execute something. I'm just going to have a run space that's available to the entire application. So I just have this run space. And uh, what I'm going to do when the application starts is create this run space and then just reuse that run space the entire time that we're executing this application. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So to create that new run space, we're just going to use run space factory again. Uh, I think instead of setting it in a variable, all we have to do is say run space since we have this static field now. And then we can say run space factory dot create run space. So we're going to do that again. And then we're going to open the run space so that we are ready to run PowerShell commands. Cool. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a um, pretty much a static uh, run command helper method just to clean things up a little bit. So we'll be able to call this, and this will execute PowerShell for us. So one thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use a task framework. So tasks are much like threads or run spaces where you can run things in the background. So like I said before, uh, there's some things that I need to do to make sure that GUI CS works correctly. So that's what I'm doing here. So we're going to run a background task anytime we want to run PowerShell. We're not going to run it on the same thread so that it doesn't block the power or the GUI um, rendering. So we'll just create this background thread. And then um, from there, I will copy and paste some code because it's a little bit easier. And we're going to actually add a couple commands here. Oops, sorry about that. So now what this is going to do is it's going to create a new PowerShell. Uh, it's going to set our run space. It's going to add the command that we pass in via run command for execution. And then it's got output via out default. So out default is a the default formatter for uh, PowerShell. So we're just going to ensure that our formatting ends up uh, formatted uh, in the default, using the default formatter. So we're going to do that. And then we're just going to call PowerShell.invoke. And now you can see we have um, our custom host again. So we're kind of back to where we were before. We have a custom run space. We have a custom host. PowerShell host executing an arbitrary command. So what I'm going to do now is add a couple fields onto my uh, 
app. So we need a message, or a, not a message box, a text box to actually enter commands. So I'm going to add, let's see here, we'll add this here. So these are kind of poorly named, but we have a label that says command, and it's positioned at x3, uh, y0. And then we have another um, another uh, control here, which is the text field control. And that is positioned to the right of the login command. And then at the same uh, Y location. And then you can kind of set the height and width of that. All right. Now, let's actually add a button to execute the PowerShell. So. That is just the button class. And you can see here that I have a button with the text run. Um, it's going to be to the right of login text. And then we're going to delete some of this because I'm going to show that later. Um, it is going to call the run command uh, method that we created. It's going to get the text out of that text box. And then it's going to set the text box to empty. So now it's going to execute that PowerShell script for us, and uh, you know we'll be able to enter that in the UI, and then you know pretty much execute PowerShell. So we'll save that, and then from here, um, let's run .NET Run again. All right. So now, oh, I forgot one thing. I need to add those controls to the window, otherwise they're not going to show up. So we're going to quit our application again. Um, to add them to the window, all I need to do is type win.add. And then from there, I can add my let's see, login, login text, and button. And we'll save that. All right, so that adds it to the window. Let's try that again. All right, cool. So now our window is a little more interesting. It has a command text box at the top here with a label and a run button. So now I should be able to do start process. And we're going to type, type a notepad. And then if you hit tab, it goes over to the, uh, the run button. And then I can hit enter. And there you go. It actually started uh, a notepad. So now I am entering commands into this command window and then running it via my custom PowerShell host. All right, so let's quit this and make this a little more interesting. Now that we can execute PowerShell uh, directly in our cool custom GUI, let's actually see if we can get some of the output of those PowerShell commands um, in that GUI. So as you saw before, what we were doing is we were actually uh, getting output from this uh, invoke command. And then from there, you know, you could technically show things if you wanted to um, based on what's returned. Uh, but let's take it a step further and create a, a custom PowerShell host user interface. So instead of uh, getting a result and kind of like showing it later, we can actually inject into the like hosting interfaces inside PowerShell to um, collect information as the script is running and then um, we'll do some cool things with that inside our GUI. So to do that, what we need to do is actually um, we need to inherit from a couple classes in the PowerShell uh, SDK. So I'm not going to type all this. Um, I will go through some of this, and then we can kind of go from there. It'll just be easier than me typing all this. Um, it'll be a real boring demo otherwise. All right, so I'm adding a couple CS files that I've created, um, and I'll just kind of go through each one of these. So first of all, we have a uh, our top-level PS host. So, for example, if you were to open a PowerShell console and you had and you typed in dollar sign host, this is the actual host object itself. And you can see here the name is console host, the version, the instance ID, and that kind of thing. If we look inside this class here, you'll see that I have a um, I am inheriting from PS host and I'm creating this host class, and it has all the same properties. I have the name, which is GUI PS host. Um, I have the user interface. I have the um, culture info, the version, that kind of thing. Um, the real interesting stuff, for me at least, is the host user interface. Uh, the host user interface allows you to interact with uh, different parts of PowerShell that you may be familiar with. 
Uh, first of all, um, you'll notice uh, methods for things like prompts, prompt for choice, prompt for credential. So depending on uh, you know what your host interface looks like, you can kind of uh, interact with uh, the different PowerShell aspects here. So this is where you would implement a prompt that would pop up in GUI CS or a, a prompt for credentials. There's things like read line, which will be called when you call read host. And there's also things um, for output. So you, as you can see here, um, you know, I'm writing the different streams, I'm writing error lines, I'm writing um, progress, that kind of thing. So let's actually look at what it takes to take this output, which I'm getting a string value from um, PowerShell. So it's using the default formatter to actually output a string to me and then saying, hey, uh, draw this somehow. And then I'm actually just adding it to a list of strings. So I just have a list of strings that's on this um, host user info, uh, host user interface class. So let's go back to our program.cs. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a new control. Um, this control uh, will be a list view control. So to add that, all we need to do is uh, underneath our other controls, I'm just going to paste this. Um, as you can see here, I have a an output control. It is a list view control. And in the constructor, what I'm passing in is the actual uh, property to the host user interface. Um, and that is that list of strings. So anytime output is added, um, this list view is going to be looking at that output that's inside the PowerShell host. Um, and then from there, it will display those strings uh, in our GUI. So um, after adding it to the uh, code there, I also need to add it to the window. So we'll just make sure we add it to the window and save that. All right. So now that is added our control. Um, we're listening to this particular um, guy here. Uh, one GUI CS thing that I need to do is after I execute my PowerShell, what I want to do is I want to make sure that GUI CS knows that um, that thing needs to re-render. So I'm going to call uh, child needs display. So that actually like forces the uh, list view to re-render. Re um, and then the last thing that I need to do is I need to initialize my run space with my custom PowerShell host. Because right now it's using the default PowerShell host. And if I want to like interject into those uh, user interface controls, what I need to do is actually add my host. So um, to do that, I'll, you know, my, I made my host very simple. So I can just first create a user interface. So we'll just do that here. And then inside create run space, it actually has an overload that, oh, if I can type, where I can pass in my custom PS host. All right, so now I'm creating a UI, I'm passing it into my host, and then I'm passing that into my run space. So now this run space is using my custom host. So instead of calling the default host that I would call before, the console host or you know the VS Code host, instead it's calling my custom host which then when things like write progress or write output are uh, called, it is going to call my host instead of calling those other things. So um, one thing I would like to do uh, before we start or try this out is up here, uh, when I run my PowerShell script, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to clear the output of that host so that I actually have a nice clean output view uh, every time I run a command. All right, so let's give this a shot. Hopefully it doesn't totally break. Building, running, looks the same. Um, but now what I'm going to call is get process. So I want something that actually outputs. So get process, hit tab, hit enter. And now if you look down below, that looks like some PowerShell output. So because I used out default, it used the defa default formatting commands to output those strings into my uh, custom PowerShell host. So what that did is uh, kind of, uh, it called the get process command, which output to the PowerShell engine, which called the formatting engine, which formatted it as a string. And eventually that string ended up in uh, my custom PowerShell host user interfaces, um, I think write or write line command. 
So it's going to end up here. And then I'm going to get that string, and I've added it to this list of strings. And then over in my program, what I've done is since I created uh, this list view that's looking at that, that output list, uh, it's going to render all those strings right in the UI. So you can see here, I have this list. And what's cool about list views, oops, if I could get out of here, is you can actually navigate them. So it's uh, scrollable. And you can look at all the different um, the different uh, processes that are currently running on my machine. So from there, you could hook up you know, other actions, maybe stopping processes, that kind of thing, digging into more information about processes if you want to get really fancy with your PowerShell host. So that is an example of um, getting output uh, from PowerShell. Now that we have output going into our uh, custom GUI, uh, what we should do is we should handle errors. Errors are really important to see in a PowerShell custom host like this because terminating errors can cause the PowerShell host itself to crash and non-terminating errors are kind of hard to see uh, if you don't expose them correctly. So first of all, let's handle uh, terminating errors because Turning errors, like I said, can cause the PowerShell of the host to crash. So you want to make sure that um, we catch those and handle them appropriately. So much like you would with a uh, regular PowerShell script to handle a turning error, what you can do in C Sharp is actually uh, put a try catch handler around ps.invoke. If there's a terminating error, it will throw an exception out of ps.invoke that you need to catch. Um, and then handle appropriately. If you don't catch this exception, uh, since this is running on a background thread, it can actually bring down the process itself. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to catch that exception, and then you can see here that I'm going to show a message box um, that's going to have that exception message as the contents of that message box. Uh, one tidbit to note, this application that main loop dot invoke call here is a GUI CS thing that I need to do. Since PowerShell is running on a background thread, I need to show this UI thing on the, the main thread. So they have this little helper method that lets me call uh, the main thread from a background thread. So that's just why that looks so complicated. All right, so let's save that. And let's try and execute this. Oops, do .NET run. All right, so now we have our application running. And uh, the easiest way to cause a turning error is like a parse exception. So I can open a bracket without closing a bracket, that kind of thing, or any, any kind of like invalid PowerShell syntax. And then if I hit Enter on here, what you'll see is uh, the actual error coming out of PowerShell. So I caught that exception. I handled it and showed uh, a message box. Here you can see I'm, it's missing the type name because I have an open square bracket, but no closed square bracket. All right, so if you hit enter on there to close that window, and then let's actually exit our application. All right, the other type of error that we need to handle appropriately is the uh, non-terminating error. So non-terminating errors will actually appear in the error stream. So if you do ps.streams, you'll actually see all the different streams that are available. So you know, the debug error, information streams, those kind of things. Uh, we're interested in the error stream. And what you could do is you could look at this error stream, and it's just a collection of objects, uh, of error record objects. And what we could do is after the execution of this PowerShell script, you could say ps.hadErrors and then uh, process any errors that happened after the invocation of the PowerShell script. So that's a pretty easy way to do it. Um, the only problem with that is you only get the errors at the end then. So if you have like a kind of like a long running script, you won't see any of those errors until that script has finished, which is gonna be um, unhelpful. So I'm gonna put in a different way to do this that I usually do. Um, don't feel bad if you don't forget this syntax or if you don't remember this syntax because um, I never do. So the idea here is that I have a, um, I'm still accessing the error stream, but I'm putting an event handler on data added. So anytime a new error is added to the event stream here, what I'm actually going to do is uh, show uh, another message box. So this actually will be called as the script is running rather than looking at all the errors at the end. Um, you can see on line 25 here, this really complicated line here, all it results in is getting an error record out of that collection. And then we're going to call toString on that error method or error record to see the error in a message box. So we'll save that. Um, and then we'll run this. 
All right, so now we have our command window again, and I want to type a non-terminating error. So the easiest way to do that is just a command that's not found. Uh, so just type some garbage in there, hit tab, and run that. And now you can see that I, I have a non-terminating error pop up. So the term gfgh is not a recognized name of the command line function, blah, blah, blah. So any non-terminating error now will produce this particular message box. So that's kind of the two ways that you can handle uh, errors in um, your custom PowerShell host. Now that we've looked at some of the basics of PowerShell hosting in terms of output and error handling, that kind of thing, let's actually look at it a little bit more of an advanced scenario. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually integrate with uh, progress. So um, the progress stream uh, can be kind of integrated with via your host uh, via this write progress method call. So anytime uh, write progress is called, you're going to get a record or progress record passed into write progress. And then from there, you can kind of display it however you want in your host. Um, in my implementation here, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to get the percent complete from that progress record. So this record is going to contain things like the activity, the status, and the percent complete. From there, I'm going to call this event handler. So then any event subscribers will get information that the progress has updated. So then over in my program, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a progress bar. So this progress bar here uh, is going to be positioned underneath our command text text box and it's going to be the same width of it and then anytime the UI uh, notifies us that the progress has changed um, we are going to update the fraction property of the progress bar so the fraction property is kind of like how much of the progress bar is currently filled in um, from there I'm gonna make sure I add it to my window and uh, what we're gonna do to actually test this out is I have this PS1 script here. Um, it's going to call or it's going to create an array of 1 to 100 the numbers and pass them over to the pipeline um, to for each object and then we're going to call write progress. Uh, percent complete will be the current number we're on and then we're going to sleep for 100 milliseconds so we can kind of see this progress bar move across. Um, finally I did have to update one thing in my PowerShell host which is the adding the initial session state. So the initial session state is kind of the initial configuration for the run space itself. So you can add all kinds of things into this initial session state, modules that you want preloaded, um, things like the execution policy, which we're setting here. Um, if I weren't to set this execution policy to something like unrestricted, it would fail because this script is not signed. Um, and then you just pass in that initial session state to create run space. All right, so let's give that a shot. So we call .NET run. And I want to run the progress script, progress.ps1, and we hit enter. And now you can see our progress bar is advancing as that script runs. So uh, it's just calling write host in that, um, or write progress in that loop. So that's kind of an example of integrating with kind of more of an advanced scenario. Uh, there's other things that you can integrate with as well. Um, like I said before, you can do things like integrate with uh, read line or read host, uh, prompting for credentials or choices, that kind of thing. Um, one other tidbit that I want to talk about a little bit is the raw user interface class. So I didn't actually implement that this in um, this particular demo. Uh, I think it would take a lot longer to kind of describe all this and demo it. Um, but there are additional things that you can do inside your PowerShell host to actually take over more of the, um, the output and control of like uh, your host. So for example, you can set things like background color, uh, the buffer size, which is like the, the you know, the, the size of the output, that kind of thing, uh, window sizes. So this will affect things like formatting and that kind of thing. Like if it knows how wide your window is, you can kind of change how the formatter works. Um, so there are other ways to, you know, read individual keys, actually set the buffer contents if you're like writing to the console buffer itself. Um, so none of this is actually necessary to create a your own PowerShell host, but this would be the kind of the most advanced level of PowerShell hosting would be to start implementing the uh, raw uh, user interface um, class. 
So that is kind of the end of the demo. We kind of went through the very basics of PowerShell hosting all the way through creating a pretty complex application that can take input and write progress. So that was my demo of creating a custom PowerShell host. Uh, in summary, uh, there is a difference between hosting in Windows PowerShell and PowerShell itself. So you will have to kind of take into account what you're trying to do uh, when you make the decision on how to build your application. Uh, you can do basic hosting with the PowerShell class. So as you saw, we can just kind of create a PowerShell class, execute PowerShell, and we're off to the races running PowerShell in our custom host. Uh, if we want more control, we are going to want to use run spaces to both persist the state of execution between calls to the PowerShell class, as well as to kind of control the execution environment by setting things like the execution policy or importing modules that we might need. And finally, if we want to take it to the next level, you can actually create a fully featured custom PowerShell host based on the PS host class and the PS host user interface class to uh, expose functionality around uh, read host, write progress, input and output, and that kind of thing. So I want to thank everybody for coming to my talk. My slides and demo will be available up on the uh, PSConf EU. Um, 2020 GitHub repository, so you'll be able to use the um, GUI CS or GUI PS um, custom PowerShell host that I created today. Thank you.